tonight to sing holy 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 we want to see you we've come to see you we've come to see you our fellowship tonight is with the father it's with the son it's with the Holy Ghost. We've come to see you, God. Yeah. That as we behold you tonight, that we are transformed from one level of glory to another. We've come to see you. Oh, we've come to see you. Lord, as we get into your word tonight, we ask that you breathe upon it. The word without the spirit is just information. But what we've come for tonight is revelation. Revelation is what changes. Revelation is what transforms. So we have come here one way and we are living here changed. With our minds renewed with your word coming into our heart as seed to produce fruits 30 fold, 60 fold, 100 fold spirit of God there's no one more qualified to teach us the word tonight so speak through my lips let it be that it's your voice that we hear tonight let our minds experience a touch from you thank you Jesus Thank you because in here today, we experience a move of the Spirit. We encounter Jesus. We are grateful because everything that we have said in your ears, we have received. In Jesus' precious name. Can somebody say a big amen? And welcome somebody to service this evening with a smile. If your neighbor is too serious, you can change your seat. Hallelujah. The atmosphere of heaven is the atmosphere of joy. Can somebody shout a big hallelujah? Can somebody shout a bigger, better, you know, hallelujah? That hallelujah is still doing some press up. Some extra hallelujahs there. Come on. Make it seven times hallelujah. 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 I was not counting. That was number one. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. Are you stirred up tonight? Yes. Are you ready for the word tonight? Yes, so we'll just pick up from where we stopped. It's still the spirit and the word. And um, can somebody remind us? We, have, we went through six things about the ministry of the Holy Ghost to the believer last week. So let's quickly, as students of the word, <laughs> if you have been paying attention without looking at your notes. <laughs> uh, first one was what? He never leaves nor forsakes us. Then second one is what? Is that the second one? It's the author. Okay. Then the, then the third one. All truth. Then the fourth one. Okay. Then the fifth one. He helps us to pray. Then the sixth one. He reveals the mind of God. <laughs> Let's try again. Number one is what? He never leaves nor forsakes us. You know, number two is the author of scripture. Number three, it leads us into all truth. Number four, it teaches us all things. Number five, it helps us to pray. Number six, okay, it, 
is there anybody who, who was able to engage the ministry of the spirit this week in 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 a very specific way maybe you come and share 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 your experience it was what happened between last week and this week because the word has to work in your life amen uh-huh. so if we teach something then we should be able to find out if 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 you know if you are really practicing what you are hearing anybody who wants to come and share their experience with the holy ghost this week <laughs> Anybody who is bold enough to come and talk about the Holy Ghost and his relationship with them this week. Just this, oh, okay, I mean last week. <laughs> You're not around. Eh, yes, that doesn't mean. <laughs> it doesn't mean. Okay, praise the Lord. So last week I was not around, but I guess I was in sync with the Spirit because spiritually I was, I, my, my fuel went low a bit. So it was money issue, normal money issue, Nigeria and everything like that. And then I came back that day, I said, I just told my wife, oh, this old thing, I'm just tired. I was even telling Mama Ini, I said, this life is beginning to tire me, you understand? And she now gave me a word. So she gave me that scripture. I don't know if she, if she knew that that scripture went a long way, that in prayer and supplications, in, play, in, in supplications and thanksgiving, we should make I request no none to God. I was crying. And then I stood up. According to how the Holy Spirit stared me. And so what I was doing was, I was first, you know, singing a victorious song. And then the Holy Spirit started steering me up to sing songs of praise. You know, I'm trying to relate it with how the, our pastor said, you know, our relationship with the Holy Spirit. I was grateful that immediately after I had sang those songs, in tears, as how the Holy Spirit was able to move me to be able to pray, but prayed in tongues and we did everything. And as I sat down, they said, let me lie down again. A call came in, and all the problems of my life, with just one call, one alert, got solved. So, so the relationship is just that I was glad that I was able to yield to the um, to the Word and how the Holy Spirit moved me to praise and to thank Him. Praise the Lord. Amen, amen. Who else? Who else? Who else? Except you did not pray this week or talk to you. There must have be one thing, you know, that the Spirit of God helped you with this week. There should be one thing at least. It reveals the mind of God to us. It leads us into all truths. Amen. It never leaves. So all the six things that we have mentioned, you should have been able to practice one more person, one more person, before I get into that. I'll, I'll call names, except you are not born again. That in, that in six days, you don't have an encounter with the Holy Ghost, then they say, push you suspect your sonship. <laughs> or, your, or your daughterhood. <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Who is the person? Come and share your... Asha point. I'm, I'm getting close to that. Let somebody quickly, quickly come out now to deliver, to deliver, <laughs> to deliver the rest. <laughs> we are good students of the world. So everything we did in church now, <laughs> in six days, you should at least have a sign. and You should have a wonder. You should have something that God has done for you in the light of that. And it's the Holy Ghost that we're talking about. Amen. Two things. Is it that we have not been taking record? Or we just, we've just decided that you're going to be quiet on me today. You know, that's also a decision that can be made. Sarah, come and share with us. Thank you. Hey, hey, praise God. Okay, um, so for me so far that's been like my relationship with god that's been like me trying to understand what god wants me to you know what he wants from me because sincerely in my place of work it has been not like it has been difficult but you see people closing deals i talked to pastor Walls about it during this week like people are selling land god why is it you know 
a bit difficult that the people I'm speaking to, I'm getting any positive feedback from them. And pastor said something when I was having that discussion with him. He said, you know, it might just be that God wants you to, God wants you to do it in a way that is unique, that is different. He wants to reveal that, I don't know how to put it, that formula in a godly way that I would imbibe. And so, and then he said, he was saying something about um, um, we need to, we need to be hungry more for God, for the manifestation of God's, God's glory. Because people in the past and in the scripture, what they've been achieving, the things that they've done, the supernatural things that God wants us to be, God wants that era to come up now where people would stay and manifest his glory and people will see things change drastic and drastically. And so that has been what my own weekly experience has been and there has been this song in my mind that as always that I always pray with which is Psalm 23 that's um, by people it says um, the Lord is my shepherd he always guide me hallelujah I am not forsaken I am not left alone so that song has been in my mind all through this week and it has been helping me so me I don't have Jide's kind of testimony where he but it has been something about the mind the working and you know the thing about God is we are always transformed when we renew our mind there's always this transformation in our thinking process in the way we look at things and for me this week the last week actually the way I've been seeing things has actually changed you know when I see a situation I feel like I'll be patient I'll wait for God I'm not going to be um, agitated and feel like when would this thing come but I will be patient because the Lord never leaves nor forsake his own so that's that's been my own testimony this week <laughs> that's been a mind transforming thing for me more confident about God's word because sometimes when we talk about God's word sorry I'm already taking too much time but sometimes when we read God's word and we study it somewhere in my mind I will not lie I feel like okay maybe it's not time for me to be a partaker of this but that has changed in me this week that if this thing can happen in scripture it can also happen to me real life here on earth people because um nelson mandela said that if if someone has never done it before it is impossible i mean it is impossible until someone has done it i mean people are enjoying god's goodness they are enjoying the miraculous they're enjoying the spiritual and so why can't i be a particular of that so i mean that's what my week has been about a mind transforming thing which is helpful for me, I think. Hmm. Pastor, you... <laughs> the remaining things just for us to take off and close now. <laughs> Have you been blessed? You've been blessed. Now. <laughs> Praise God. So we'll just move from there. So see, when it comes to testimonies and all that, uh, sometimes, you know, it's usually financial testimonies that move people more. than. But your sanity... The fact that you are you are you are standing is a serious matter. Do you know how it is for people to, who don't have hope how they live? That you know they are in situations and they can't even they don't even know what it means to talk to God. And you you go through a whole week the stress in Lagos. You know the stress in Lagos. Uh-huh. And then just just one chat with God. And then you are feeling better. Your temperature has reduced. You know, you are, you are not you are not you are not just agitated or in a place of confusion, just because you've spoken to God. It's it's a mystery, and we take it for granted sometimes. We sleep, we wake up. The Holy Spirit tells you something to do. It keeps you calm. It comforts you in the midst of things. That's massive. Amen. Some people have all the money, but they don't have that level of peace. You don't have that level of peace. And that's something that money cannot buy. Money can't buy peace. Oh. Amen. Money can buy happiness. Which is something that is temporal. Something can happen, you know. If, 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 if somebody gives you a car now. That you've been waiting for, you'll be what? Happy. But you know that after two weeks of driving that car. All that, all that initial excitement is gone. Since It's just like when you buy a new phone. The first three days, oh my goodness. 
It's almost like they just they just give birth to a child. You are holding the thing, checking the thing, everything you want to you want, you know. So that 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 happens, but we have things that we enjoy every day. And it's important because the essence of this series is for us to be able to maximize the ministry of the Holy Spirit, the ministry of the Holy Spirit. And we'll go to the seventh thing. It shows us the future. It shows us the what? The future. I, this particular ministry of the Holy Spirit, I like it. Because one of the things that it helps you to do is that it becomes your shock absorber. When you know the future, let me, let me give you an example. Let's imagine you are dating somebody and then the Holy Spirit has told you that this relationship is not going to work. And then three days afterwards, the guy comes and says, I'm, I'm no longer doing it. Oh, you just say thank you so much. I already knew. <laughs> Even though that, that, that might not stop you from crying. And you will be emotional because of the investment of time that you have put in it. But the fact, it does something to you if you knew before it happened. You can imagine if you didn't know. And as far as you are concerned, we are going somewhere together. Oh, your heart is going towards marriage. And the guy shows up, you guys go to watch a movie and, and as it's coming, there's something I really wanted to tell you. <laughs> your heart will sink. <laughs> and, and, and the dagger will go in so, so strongly. It's just something about the Holy Ghost telling us things before it happens. It helps, you see, people who are pace setters, one of the things that they enjoy is foresight. They enjoy foresight. You know, I was telling my wife recently, I said, um, there's a particular there's a particular product that is probably twice its price now. And I said, if I had known when I bought one or two of it, I would have bought ten. If I had known three years ago, between 2000 and this is what, 2022? Between 2019 and 2022, the price of that thing has doubled. And I have two of those things. I was like, ah, if I just knew that this time would come, I would have bought more. So that now, oh, and the price of each of those things, as at that time when I bought it, was 200 and something. Now it's about 500. It's about 450. So you just imagine I bought eight. And I'm making 200K from eight. 200K times eight is what? 1.6. 1.6. Amen. Profit, profit. <laughs> so, the ministry of the Holy Ghost is showing us the future. If we, you see, let, let me tell you the truth. Should I, should, should I tell you the truth? We are the ones who miss out because we don't engage Him as much. Have you ever been in a prayer time where probably you didn't want to pray? Hmm? And you engaged prayer in that time. And in 10 minutes, God tells you something. And the result of that thing was massive that you asked yourself, what if I didn't pray? Just what if I didn't just go to that place where I could hear what he has to say. And it tells you something about the future that changes everything. I, I remember one time we were in Park Road. Somebody wanted to sell, sell a keyboard to me. I have a keyboard already. And as the guy came, and he told me about the keyboard. I heard in my spirit. He said, buy and sell. I had never done it before. I was going to buy that keyboard. As at that time, this was like 10 years ago, for 60,000 naira. And then I told the guy, okay, drop the keyboard. Come and pick up your check on Monday. This was on Thursday. And I put it up on my, at that time it was, is it BBM? I put it on my, on my BBM, on my DP, as they call it that time. So, this was on Thursday. On Saturday, somebody comes to pick up the keyboard for 100,000 naira. So, on Monday, the guy still comes to collect his check, 60,000 naira check, and I've made 40,000 naira. Why? Because the one who knows the future, how did it happen that between three days, is this the first time you're going to try to sell something that it, it would not take you like, almost like two, three months? But how is it that it happened? That at that time, there was somebody who needed a keyboard who was going to see something on my DP. 
and come to buy on Saturday and the guy is coming to collect his check on Monday. The Holy Ghost knows. I didn't need a keyboard. And there are some things that you might not need that the Holy Spirit will say buy and it wouldn't make sense to you. And after three days of buying it, he will now tell you this is what I want you to use it to do. And you will now be wondering. And sometimes there are instructions that have come to our, come our way that we didn't obey because it didn't make sense. It didn't make sense. And maybe days after, you will now pray and say, God, I want you. And God will say, I, I told you to do this now. Now you are praying prayer now. If you had just heard me, because God sees the future. That's why it's called the Alpha and the Omega. He knows the end from the beginning. He knows the end from the beginning. John 16, verse 13. Let's quickly read that scripture together. When the Spirit of truth, let's, let's read together. When the Spirit of truth comes, He will guide you into all truth. He will not speak on His own, but will tell you what He has heard. He will tell you about the future. Oh, amazing. Hallelujah. 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 You know, sometimes we are so much in a hurry that what we want to only hear about is about the present. Oh, that's all. That's all. So when we pray, all that we're expecting God to talk about is what is happening to us. Now. Now. Everything is now. Fast food. Everything is now. How will it feel? And sometimes this can be tough. What I want to describe can be very tough. What if God tells us to start a business now that is not booming now? And you have seen the next 10 years. So the first year you are struggling. Like what's the profit inside this thing? But I thought I had God. Second year you are still, you're still doing like struggle. Third year, the same way. In short, fourth year, your friends are already advising you to pack this business and put it somewhere. It's not going to work. But God, who knows the future, showed you something. Seventh year, it still felt like that. And even in the seventh year, they say it's the year of perfection. It's, it's, not, it's, it's not looking like perfect anything. And, and you are discouraged. The years are going by. And in the midst of all these things, you are seeing your friends travel to Dubai, travel to these places, all these things. And God, God was the one that told you, and you heard. In short, now you're already doubting that God told you anything because it's not looking like it. And in the 10th year, a government policy shows up that causes that business to spike up by a thousand percent. And something that the profit you make on it is probably 5,000 error that you make on the sales of that particular product. The government now says, Oh, we want to do something that will involve every Nigerian. And it was your company that they came to. And you are going to serve more than 200 million people. The same profit of 5,000 Naira. That couldn't do anything for you 10 years ago. You had to even borrow to pay your house rent. And you were going through all of this trouble. Just because God said... Do you know a lot of us would have left some of the things that we were doing... If not that, we remember that God said. There's something about the Holy Ghost showing you a... And some of the things that will make you stay is something small that the Holy Spirit showed you about that particular business. Something, just something. A scripture he gave you that in the midst of the storm, because you are building on a foundation that will not fail, it may look like a strain is pulling you, everything is happening. Your friends are moving forward. And they're telling you they just came back from Mauritius. And you, you are wondering, ah, even to move from here to Obudu. It's not happening. Don't use somebody else's calendar. Don't use somebody else's calendar. Very, very important. See, I remember the story of Pharaoh and Egypt and all of that. It's, it's a story that we must learn from. God gave Pharaoh a dream that showed him. Well done, sir. <laughs> my, my, my ears couldn't skip that. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> so, God showed Pharaoh a dream about the next 14 years. 
Have you ever considered, do you really pray about the future? Do you ask God for the next 30 years? Do you know that if God shows you what's going to happen in the next 20 years, you will change? Now. <laughs> Nobody will see. Some addictions will fall. You will just change. Sight is very powerful. Do you know? Sound too is very powerful. If God tells you something, I suspect that it is what Joseph saw that kept him from not falling for the temptation that Potiphar's wife put before him. He saw something bigger than that temptation. So God shows Pharaoh a dream. And in that dream, you can imagine one dream in one week and two, maybe a second one. He showed him two different dreams that meant exactly the same thing. Look at how two dreams changed the events of Egypt. It changed government policies, two dreams. A whole nation, two dreams. Changed everything. You see, who has the interpretation of this dream? They get Joseph, Joseph interprets the dream. And the dreams, and the, and, and the interpretation of these dreams was that there will be seven years of what? Plenty first. And there will be another seven years of famine. All the other nations around Egypt did not hear this. They didn't see this. But Egypt saw it. Egypt did what? Saw it. Foresight did something for Egypt. Israel too didn't even see it. But Egypt saw it. Does it not tell you that promotion will come from foresight? If God shows you what your boss likes now, that he didn't put in your JD, and the Holy Ghost shows you that in the next three months, your company is going to change, and this value, if you add it now, they can make you assistant manager from being the clerk. And it's just value that the man will sit down, and he's thinking, who can do this job? And he thinks somebody is already doing it. And you, you started doing it, not because it's part of your job, job description, but because the Holy Ghost inspired you in that particular direction. It might just be something as small as you just suggest during a meeting. Say, sir, we don't have any online presence. I know we are making money, we are selling, but we don't have online presence. But I think that we should do something about it. And you put one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. They said, This is what we should do. This is our plan for Monday. This is our plan for Tuesday. And even if nobody is doing it, you are do you decide to start creating things on Canva. And you send it to your boss. He said, Can I can we can we post this? And you say, Okay, yes, post it. And you post it and you post it and you post it. And in six weeks of posting it, your boss notices that the account, something has happened. You were making money before, but now there's more sales, and he doesn't say anything. And three months down the line, and you, you are struggling. You have been praying, but you have not seen manifestation yet. And one morning that you're about to give up, that morning you wake up and you're like, God, our relationship is done. That you have slid me for too long. <laughs> you have you have done what you have slid me for too long this is the day <laughs> and it's just one thing you just watched on instagram that brought you back i say god i'm going to give you another chance <laughs> you know how we have some of these conversations in our mind you're not saying anything but you're saying a lot <laughs> you're saying so much and then you move and then you get to the office and then there's a general there's a general meeting and then your boss says, I feel like I'm talking about somebody's story. Amen. You know, and then your boss says, oh, you're going to be our marketing manager now. Want to, want to. From being the clerk. And you're wondering, what's my qualification? Your qualification was that you heard what the Holy Spirit said, which you didn't even understand. 
In short, at a point, your, your other colleagues made you feel like you were actually forward. But guess what happened? Three months down the line, something shows up. And there are things that the Holy Ghost had told you that didn't make sense to you. That whilst, whilst you were executing it, it didn't, it, didn't, it didn't make sense. That even after you executed it, you asked yourself, what's the, what's the eternal value of this? And six months down the line, something happens and then it makes sense. Hallelujah. Jesus was dying on the cross. He didn't, do you know the kind of contradiction the disciples would have felt? That this man that we walked with, we saw how they would want to capture him. They won't be able to capture him. What's happening? Do you imagine, can you imagine the disappointment that Judas felt? I believe strongly that Judas didn't think they would be able to, they would, they would be able to catch Jesus. He wanted to just make money of thinking, ah, uh, and it was that day that he was thinking that, oh, I could imagine because he had been with him. He had seen things. Peter, uh, Judas saw Jesus walk on water. He was there when the loaves were multiplied. So this, this do you understand? But there's something about the future that sometimes while you're living in the present, you can be disappointed. But in that disappointment, there's something that God is doing in the future. He's working all things together for your good. Amen. So showing Egypt two dreams that meant the same thing. Seven years of abundance Seven years of plenty. Should I let you know? Fourteen years is not very, is not small, though. Amen. Fourteen years is not what? It's not. It's not. Let's flip it. Let's imagine that it was seven years of farming and then seven years of plenty. How would you feel if you were experiencing seven years of farming? Without the knowledge of the future, you will give up. After four years, five years, the same prayer point. Six years, the same prayer point. And don't forget, this thing that the Lord showed, there are things that the Lord will show that you can use prayer to change. And there are things that the Lord will show you that are definite events that must occur. So the farming and the abundance, they were not, they, they were not events that they could pray about. Are you, are you getting what I'm saying? It's not like, oh, we see, they will now uh, they will pray, let's go and pray that God will avert it. No. It was part of the purpose and the plan of God. So, foresight changed everything. Which means that in almost all the countries that were around Egypt, too, for that seven years that Egypt was experiencing abundance, everybody was experiencing abundance. Everybody. And do you know what they would have felt? They would have thought that it would last for a long time. But from the first year, because Egypt had foresight, they were keeping 20%. Keeping 20%. Keeping 20%. Keeping 20%. The seventh year came, there was still abundance. Then the eighth year came, there was famine. Do you know what happens when people don't have foresight? They would think that it will just last for a period, a small period. So they will still be behaving the way they were behaving, spending the way they were spending. Then first year passed, it didn't change. Second year passed, it didn't change. Third year passed. Even Jacob. Even Jacob. Because the purpose and the plan of God must be fulfilled. Israel had, must move to Egypt. Must. Because God had a conversation with Abraham about it. Is it possible that some of the things that is happening in your life is probably based on certain conversations that God has had with your forefathers that you don't know about? And you, you're angry now. <laughs> and you're just fulfilling prophecy. The Holy Ghost shows us the future. So Egypt was boiling when the other countries were suffering. Why? Foresight. Something happened before we moved into this particular facility. Early that year, we moved in the month. We finally moved in in end of July. End of July. But early that year, God just told me. You know, and when I say God told me, it's not in English. You know, when we when we when we say God said, we picked something up by the Spirit. Amen. It's when we want to tell you that we say it in English, and so don't be don't be confused. Amen. 
So I picked up by the spirit that I should start putting money aside. I didn't know for what. And I told my wife, I said, I just feel like God wants me to put some money aside. So I put some money aside, put some money aside. Put, this was 2018, Abby. I put some money aside, put some money aside. So this was April now. And before I knew it, Pastor Akin calls me to come and check. Oh, and he, he, he sent me a message. I said, oh, do you know anybody who needs a four-bedroom and all that? I, I said, can I come and see it? <laughs> so I came in here, saw the place. I called my wife. I said, please come. Come and check. And we saw it and we liked it. And we started talking. I said, ah, they wanted to take it, um, put it out on a lease. Somebody had even come to check it. A food company had come to check it. They didn't give the food company and all that. They wanted to give it on a lease. I said, ah, me, I only have money for one year and we talk, 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 back and forth, back and forth. I said, oh, it's okay. And I said, I, I, as, as at that time, I, I had saved one M. I put one M aside. So I said, ah, can I even drop the one M I have, at least for the time being before? So immediately the next day, I went to transfer the one million. How did that happen? Do you know the kind of pressure I would have been if there was no money on ground? You not be telling stories. Ah, you just just hold it for us, sir. Just hold it for us. Sir. You know, those that sometimes those things happen, and it's because we were disobedient to the voice of God, and we didn't allow self control to take over when we're supposed to. Because there are always many things to use money for. So how do you know when you are supposed to be very prudent? Not that other things will not come. Wow, well, just so that's how we put in put in the first one million and. Before you know it, in a few weeks, the remaining money came. But how would it have been if we started from zero? The opportunity would have come, but it could have gone somewhere else. But I didn't know why the Holy Spirit was telling me to save because we had a space before. We had a space in Ayo Daily. But it was time. God promised us double. But we thought it was just we getting scripture and maybe we were misinterpreting it when we left Papa Jao. So the Ayodele place was our transition. So it was really double. God wanted us to separate business from home. And this place, God had prepared it. In short, Pastor Akin wanted to send me the message since November. He said he didn't know why he just held on until that point. And it was around January that God told me to start putting money aside. So he couldn't even make a complete decision about letting the place go until that period that God saw that we were ready. Tell your neighbor, foresight is important. God shows us the future. The Holy Ghost shows us the future. So when you pray right now, don't just pray for the present. Pray, pray, pray for the future. There are certain mod business models that are trending now that maybe in the next five years it will not trend. That the Holy Ghost will show you something now. Can you imagine before we had online trade and all that, the companies like Amazon, they're on top of their game now. Do you know why? They entered it before everybody started entering it. Look at Netflix. Did Netflix know that uh, COVID will happen? Did Zoom know that COVID will happen? And Zoom had been on for a while before that point. But look at that event how it increased the sales, how something that was seemingly bad for the whole world became something that was good for some companies. Did, did anybody see COVID? <laughs> Do you understand what I'm saying? It's something about seeing the future. So when you pray and you are maximizing the ministry of the Holy Ghost, don't just think of your, pro your present problem. -o. Be expectant that the Holy Spirit will show you the future. Jesus knew the future. That's why he was not disappointed when Judas betrayed him. If you were the one, you'd have entered offense. Strong offense that would kill the process totally. Jesus knew that the disciples were going to leave him. Do you know how bitter he could have been if, if he didn't know? If he didn't know that Peter who was making mouth. You can imagine when Peter told him that, ah, I will die with you. And he did not know that he was just mouth. And when they caught him, then he now notices that Peter has denied him. His heart will sink. 
All the questions that Pilate is asking him, he'll be answering wrongly. Praise God. When we're going to leave at the Oshoma day, I remember clearly, I was just walking home that day and I got to just half of the streets and it was like a flash. And I saw in the spirit, I was telling somebody I used to live here. So I came home, I told my wife that this, this was what I saw. A few weeks down the line, the landlord comes and gives us quit notice. Were we angry? No. Why? We've seen it. See, God will save you emotional stress by showing you the future. He will show you how people will respond so that when they respond, sometimes they're not even offended. And they'll be wondering, why is he not offended? You saw it. You knew the options of how they could behave and react. Hallelujah. All right, the eighth thing, the ministry of the Holy Ghost, is the life-giving spirit. John 6, verse 63. John, are you getting, getting something tonight? If not, then make sure that you expect that the Holy Spirit will show you the future. It will show you the future. We're so, we're so engaged or we're so busy with the present that we don't sometimes prepare for the future. There's a future. There's a future. Nigeria has a future. Nigeria has a what? A future. And as of 2020, God told me that the process that we have been waiting for will take about 19 years. 19. Which means that some people, ah, Debbie, you're putting hand on your head. <laughs> Not that it will be bad, you understand, but... <laughs> But the process where we will feel like, oh, finally, we <laughs> to take 19. And that was since that was 2020. 2020 plus 19 will be what? 2039, Abby. Some of you are not happy with what I just said. But see, I know we like to hear prophecies like, oh, this next election will be the answer of the nation. Um, it will be part of, see, when miracles happen, it's a cumulative process sometimes. Everything will be leading to somewhere. Amen. Amen. So let's not be afraid. It's going to keep getting better, but it's 19 years that the Lord said. 19. I know that we, we like, if I had said, oh, this next election, you'd be happy, you say, big guy, amen. But when I said 19 years now, you're not saying, amen. It's really 17. <laughs> Praise God. Praise God. It says, the Spirit alone gives eternal life. Human effort accomplishes nothing. And the very words I have spoken to you are spirit and life. It's important. Don't never engage the word of God without the spirit. Never engage the word of God without the word, without the spirit, because all you will have is information. And information is just good for your head. It doesn't do anything to your heart. It doesn't change a person. You just have it as, 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 as a tool. Look at the, 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 the seven sons of Sceva. They were victims of having information without the Spirit. Did, 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 did they use the name of Jesus or not? They used the name of Jesus, didn't they? But they, they got results, too, didn't they? But the kind of result that they got was not the kind of result that they expected. The demon-possessed person pounced on them. And they ran out of the room naked. That devil would have been a t- terrible devil. <laughs> it would have been a terrible, terrible, wicked spirit. <laughs> that person. They use the to Jesus. Come out in the name of Jesus that Paul preaches. They say, hey, all right. Say, Paul, we know. Jesus, we know. Who are you? Ah. In short, it almost felt like they lured them into the room. Say, come. <laughs> you know how during, during some deliverance services that we have seen, this is like question and answer and argument. Come out. I will not come out. <laughs> no. <laughs> so, what's your name? Which kingdom are you from? <laughs> God help us. <laughs> They were victims 
of taking the word without having the spirit back in. So they casted out that demon in the name of Jesus, but there was no spirit. There was no breath upon it. So it, it, it didn't make any difference. So when you read the Bible and the scripture says, which anything you ask in the name of Jesus, look at the conditions. Though. The spirit is the spirit of the word. So without the spirit, the word is lifeless. It's just another book of history. Do you know the Bible is a book of history? If you are going to look at it logically, it tells us Jewish history. <laughs> Praise God. And a man called Jesus. But it means something else to us. Why? Because of the Spirit. If, you, if somebody wants to argue and wants to use the Bible and goes to read the Bible, you'll be able to argue some things out. And person might even find a lot of contradictions in the Scripture. But when you read with the Spirit, and when you read by the Spirit, revelation comes and it transforms and power is produced. Power. Power is produced. And that's why the, the result you have in your life is going to be based on revelation. Because you can read scripture and, and cram it and quote it. But that doesn't mean that the power that is supposed to back that scripture up is active in your life. Amen. So it makes the, the scripture come alive. Jesus is not just a name. Amen. And the Holy Ghost is not it. It's him. It's a he. Hallelujah. So once it comes upon the word and it's quickened unto you, it changes everything. Changes everything. I never knew that the Lord is my shepherd could be a scripture that could heal. But it was quickened unto me that, that particular morning. I was feeling so sick. And I was just speaking scriptures. And the Holy Ghost breathed upon that scripture. And I said, the Lord is my shepherd. And strength came into my body. I came out of the bathroom as if nothing happened. Pray one prayer right now. Say, Spirit of God, breathe upon your word in my life. That your word is powerful on my lips and you confirm it with signs and wonders following. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. The ninth thing is that it makes us aware of our status as children of God. Galatians 4 verse 6 says, And because we are children, God has sent us the spirit of his son into our hearts, prompting us to call out Abba Father. So we can, we can because of the spirit of God, there's no physical sign that tells you that you're a child of God. Have you noticed? Nothing. Because we all look like Nigerians. All of us. When you give your life to Christ, it's not like you go to him and say, Ah, it's here, Matty, change. Oh, you are to move, sorry. If you're still the same physical body, but you, something happened on the inside and you started referring to yourself as a child of God. What happened? You were not just a creature of God anymore or a creation of God. You became a child of God. Why? Because of the Holy Ghost. He bears weakness on the inside of you. And let me tell you, the same way he bears weakness on the inside of you is the same way he speaks and communicates with you. Did you notice that when you gave your life to Christ, it was not that you heard the voice on the inside saying you are now a child of God. It was a knowing. You just knew. You just knew. You became aware. Some form of awareness came upon you. And you know that, oh, I, I, I can't do this again. Not, 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 not because you can't with your body, but there was now a divine restraint on you brought in by the Spirit of God, saying a child of God should not behave like this. Hallelujah. Then the tenth thing is that he is the quickening spirit. I like this particular one. Romans 8 verse 11 he is the word quickening spirit. Quickening spirit. The Spirit of God who raised Jesus from the what? Lives where? Lives where? And just as God raised Christ Jesus from the dead, he will do what? Give life to your mortal bodies by this same spirit living where? Within you. He didn't say he will give life to your immortal bodies. It's to your what? Mortal bodies. What does that mean? What does that really mean? Let's, 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 let's think about it for a moment. Do you know that scientifically speaking, as you grow older, your strength is supposed to diminish. Your strength is supposed to what? Diminish. But what does the scripture say? Hmm? That even when you are old, you'll be what? Fat and what? Flourishing. Fat and flourishing. Moses at 120 
didn't need glasses. He saw, he was standing straight. He was not using a walking stick at 120. And he was going on the mountain. He would climb on the mountain. Climb. Amen. But guess what? Don't, that's why the scripture says we should renew our minds. Because let me tell you, some people, when they see themselves in their 70s, they're already seeing themselves sitting on a chair with the walking stick beside and with glasses. Double of what they are using now. The one that looks like the, the downside of, of Coke bottle. Those thick ones. That's what they are seeing in their future. When one they are, once they sit down, they are thinking of what the future will look like. They are even afraid of the future. They are afraid of old age. Some people are afraid of old age. They are so afraid of old age that everything they are doing now is being stirred up by that fear. Once they think of when they are 75, they are already thinking of themselves saying, Oh, my that their eyes can't see well. That's not your portion in Jesus' name. As you grow older, because there is the person of the Holy Ghost, the Bible says the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead. Let me tell you, the power that was released during resurrection is the highest that can be released. It's the highest that can be released. People can wake up from the dead. People can, you know, pray and somebody will rise from the dead and the person will still die again. But Jesus was raised from the dead not to die anymore. So the same power that raised Jesus from the dead, the same Holy Ghost, it didn't give us a second-hand Holy Ghost or a UK used. Amen. Tell your neighbor, I don't have to come with Holy Ghost. I have the original. The same one who moved at the beginning. Hallelujah. Somebody should get excited about that. That the same spirit that caused things to happen in the life of Jesus lives on the inside of you. The same one. The same ancient spirit of God lives on the inside of you. Lives on the inside of you. It lives on the inside of you. So there shouldn't be any occasion of sickness. There shouldn't be any occasion of, of disease. Are you getting what I'm saying? John Gile caught on that revelation. Strong revelation. During a particular pandemic, he told them, say, come on, so what happens is that when these things, when they say, how are you going out to help people and you're not contacting these things? They say, bring a microscope so that you will see what happens when this disease comes in contact because I carry life. It takes a level of consciousness. You have been eating that thing. You have not been excusing certain things and saying it's because I've not rested. Did you, did you, do you have more work than Jesus had? <laughs> if, the, if the healing anointing increases on your life so much in a way that people are at your gate, you will know that <laughs> that they just know that there's healing virtue here. As you wake up like this, you are coming out with your boxers and singlet to just say hi. And people are already there. There's a line. There's a queue. 60 people. And then as you think that they are reducing, the line is already going long again. Say, sir, we just want you to... We came from Kaduna. We came from... <laughs> you will cut out. You will leave the house. See, we have not thought about it. If we live out this experience that God has placed on the inside of us, this person called the Holy Ghost, if we express him, you, you won't be able to give somebody your address in the real sense. You might even leave social media for a while. You, can't, you won't be able to handle the weight of glory. Amen. Amen. That there's a record that every week, 60 people that, that were blind now can see. Ah, you are done. You are what? Ah. You are now into serious trouble because you won't have your life again as you know it. You won't have your life. That you sang and as you were singing, they were playing your song on radio and everybody in the hospital, they were all discharged the next day. Ah. See, there are level of blow that <laughs> if you blow that way. <laughs> but that's the intention of God because Jesus was not booking venues though, to have crusade. Did you notice? Jesus was not booking venues to have, to have crusade. He enters into a city and everybody comes because his fame had gone. 
It means that if Jesus just walked on the wire road, there will be traffic. And we walk on the wire road every time. <laughs> Shouldn't we repent? Amen. We are not maximizing the Holy Ghost too. Amen. So you shake somebody and they don't have transfer of glory. You shake somebody and it's... I, I know. Something should happen. Hmm? It's not only witches that should be able to use um, bonds to be initiating people. You to unshake. <laughs> Praise God. Praise God. That's why I take naming ceremonies very seriously. When I'm praying for children, when I go to name them, oh, I'm very conscious. That child is being initiated. And their parents might not even know. This one, this one will serve the Lord. <laughs> <laughs> He'll be dreaming and be having angelic visitations. <laughs> Amen. Daniel was a partaker of this particular ministry that we were talking about. Ministry of your body being quickened, quickened, quickened. Do you know that as a believer, you don't, you don't, you're not dull. You can't, you can't, have, you can't even afford to be dull. Because the Holy Spirit, apart from being on the inside of you to quicken your mortal body, when he talks about your mortal body, it's every part of your body. Amen. Your physical body. Which means that your eye is part of your mortal body. Your nose is part of your mortal body. Your mouth is part of your mortal body. Amen. Your respiratory system is part of your mortal body. Your brain is part of your mortal body. So you can't say to me, I just don't know mass. You must know that mass. Amen. They don't have to put dollar or naira in front for you to understand how to calculate it. It's because you have not you have not taken advantage of the ministry of the Holy Ghost. Amen. And we can look at that. So there are things that we have said. You know, for me, I, I, at a point in my life, I I, I felt like all the all the uh, sensory ability that God was supposed to put in my nose, He put it in my ears. So I hear. <laughs> Everybody would have perceived and and you know before I even can't you smell it. I, I can't. <laughs> but I'm more conscious now. Amen. Because the spirit that quickens is on the inside of me. Say the spirit of God lives on the inside of me. And it quickens my mortal body. Let's quickly open to Daniel 1, which is the final scripture I read today. Then we'll continue next week. I love church service because, you know, I can post sermon and continue. We can continue next week. I thought would add that I would pass this point, actually. As far as I was concerned, when I was preparing for sermon, I've gone very far. And I didn't know that what I was writing would probably last for three hours. <laughs> Praise God. Daniel 1, we'll read verse 4 to 5 and then we'll read 20. There was, a, there was a description that was given. It says, select only what? Strong, healthy, and good-looking young men. So Daniel was a good-looking young man. Amen. Painful that he was, he was an Enoch. He did not have wife to, to enjoy the fineness of the man. But, <laughs> but God used him, amen. In, <laughs> in ways, <laughs> amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. He said, make sure they are well versed in what? Every branch of learning are gifted with knowledge and what? Good judgment and are suited to serve where? In the royal palace. Train these young men in the language and what? literature of Babylon, the king assigned them a daily ration of food and wine from his own kitchens. They were to be trained for what? So they were in school for three years. Our own courses are four years, five years, six years, seven years. Um, and if Asu is involved, it says, and then they would enter the royal service. Then verse 20, whenever the king consulted them in any matter requiring wisdom and balanced judgment. He found them what? Ten times more capable than any of the magicians and enchanters in his entire kingdom. See, when we maximize this ministry of the Holy Ghost, as regarding quickening our mortal body, it's a consciousness that makes this thing operate. Next week, I'm going to teach how to activate this the ministry of the Spirit. There's a way to activate the ministry of the Spirit. Whereby once you engage it, because most of us, we went to school without really, really, really engaging it as much. I engaged it a bit. I remember one 
one of the exams that we had, the lecturer gave us handouts, three handouts. They were not small handouts. And he said, questions are going to come out from these handouts in the exam. And the exam was the next week. We we're giving the handouts on Friday. The exam was probably Monday or Tuesday. Amen. So I knew that without the help of the Holy Spirit, we we're done. So I sat down in my vocal booth there at, at uh, Park Road. And I said, Holy Spirit, you know what will come out in this exam. So show me how to read this handout so that I would gain <laughs> miracle. <laughs> Praise God. Hey, I sit down, Tiffa. <laughs> So I, I prayed a simple prayer and I said, God, show me how to read this handout. Show me where to read. Show me what to read because Friday, exam is Monday or Tuesday. How? There's no way. If you waste your time reading everything, what if only page one comes out? So I sat down and guess what? As I started reading, I will flip and I will pause to check my spirit. That, inner, that same inner weakness that makes you know that you're a child of God. I was following it. I would just feel, not this page, turn. Then I would turn and I say, this one, read. I'll read. Then I would turn again, not this page. I'll turn again, not this page. I'll turn again and say, read. I'll read. And as I'm reading, I'm, I'm, I'm asking myself questions and writing the answers down. That's how I, I that's, that's, that's how I read for exams. I will read, set exam for myself and write. When I got into the exam, well, the things I read were the things that came out. How? By the Holy Ghost. By the Holy Ghost. So every other person might have been crying and be angry when they see the questions. But there's a spirit that quickens. That if I didn't sit down to just engage him, I would be like every other person. I would have been like every other person. So there's a way that you can do what you are doing right now that if you engage him, you will find your ten, yourself ten times better. In short, there's a dangerous scripture that says that you will, be, you will have more understanding than, than your teachers. There's a scripture that says you will have what? More understanding than your teachers. It's by the Spirit. It's by, they marveled at Jesus when they saw his manifestation. Say, what kind of wisdom is this? And we read those things, we pass by it, and we don't ask God, why am I not like this? Because you know you already have him. You have to just engage him. Can we rise? In areas of your life where you feel that manifestation is below what you are seeing in scripture, talk to the Holy Ghost right now. Talk to him and say, quicken me. Quicken me. I want to see manifestation of your power, of your glory. You quicken my mortal body. Receive quickening in your business, in your family, how you run your own, how you run things. If Jesus was the one running your business, what do you think it will look like? And, he's, and he lives on the inside of us by his spirit now. If Jesus was the one running your home, what do you think it will look like? And he is. He's just waiting for us to engage him. I want to see the spirit dimension over everything I do. Let that be your prayer. I want to see the spirit dimension over everything I do. I want to be aware. Conscious. Of his quickening ability. It's quickening my body, quickening my cells, quickening my mortal body. I want you to put your hand on yourself right now and begin to ask for quickening, that quickening ability. Anything that the enemy might have planted in your body as regarding your health, as regarding your strength, that the Holy Spirit quickens your body every system, your digestive system, your nervous system, your, your respiratory system, and as you grow, as your days are, so shall your strength be. 
Your strength will not dwindle. You will not grow weak. You are growing stronger because the path of the righteous shines brighter. So it's shining brighter and brighter and brighter. So you are going, growing stronger and stronger in your 70s, in your 80s, in your 90s. You are still chewing bone. You don't have need of the walking aids. No. You are standing straight. Speak into your future. I know it's maybe 50 years from now. I know it's probably 60 years from now. But the Holy Ghost shows us the future before it happens. That any plan of the enemy that would, would, would hinder you fulfilling destiny, we cancel it now. The Bible says, No weapon formed or fashioned against me shall prosper. Any tongue that rises up against me in judgment, I condemn. I condemn. I condemn. I condemn. So any lifestyle that you are engaging right now that can, can stand against you in the future, the Holy Ghost will start to show you and you start to make adjustments in the name of Jesus. Pray, pray like you mean it. That the remaining, the remaining months and the remaining weeks of this year, there's no occasion of sickness. Why? You have the life-giving spirit in you. You have the life-giving spirit in you. That we will learn to cooperate with Him.